Something that people tend to get into Squarespace for is blogging. They want to build a simple, easy to use blog that they can manage for the long term. But on the other side of the spectrum are professional corporations and businesses and a lot of my clients who want to use a blog for its SEO purposes. They want to build authority on this site. They want more visitors. They want more leads. All of this. And you have two completely different use cases. But they all use the same mechanics. They all use the same foundations. And that is what we call on Squarespace a blog collection. So this is quite an in-depth guide. It's going to go through how to set the blog up from scratch, including choosing your template or your sort of starter kit for your website, how to set up the blog, how to change the backend settings, how to add blocks into a blog, how to change how it looks, all of this. So I'm going to hop on over to the screen and take you through quite a comprehensive guide on how to blog on Squarespace. The first thing that we want to do when creating a blog is actually have a website set up. So I'm on the templates section of Squarespace. So before you sign up, you can start with a template if you wish. Now you can have a little scroll through um, see them all. I've got all highlighted here, but you can select, you know, whatever niche your business is in. You can select something from here. You can also select a type. So I'm just going to select blog and see what comes up. Personally, I quite like this one. So I'll preview it. What's this called? Cadre, Cadia, the Cadia group. So we've got this. Okay, looks cool. Start with this design and we're going to set the website up. And we're going to give it a name, Sam's Excellent Blog. Continue, 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 get started. So we've got our starting point here. Now I'm not going to go into how to set the site itself up because I've got loads and loads of tutorials on this. But what I'm going to go into is how to set up the blog. So if we go into website and then we find this icon here so this is it's a pen icon it just tells us that this is a blogging collection if you need to add a blogging collection in from scratch what you would do is click plus you'd go to collections and then find blog and then click blog and select a blog layout but because we've selected a blogging template that's already there and good to go so you can see it's set up here doesn't look very good, but it's it's set up. So what we want to do basically is just get rid of everything that's already in there. So we click this, click delete, and that's going to all be in the recycle bin. Now we want to set up some blogs. So we click plus, and this is how we add a blog post. Our title goes up here. So let's just call it Sam's blogging journey begins. And then we want to write stuff. So I'm going to use the AI integration that Squarespace has to generate some text. Write a blog about Sam's brilliant blogging journey. And then we'll let Squarespace write that. Let it generate some nonsense text. I'm sure, I'm sure it won't be that cohesive. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to add things into the blog. I'm going to show you how to do the back end settings of a blog and then set up the main blogging page. So I'm going to basically going to show you all of the functions that you need to set up a functioning blog on Squarespace. Now that is me filling time while this loads, but I'm going to just cut it until it loads now. I won't bore you. Okay, lovely jubbly. So we've got this, which is actually a decently long bit of text. So we can see we've got text in. Now, if you want to add images into your blog post, you see all these pluses here as we go down. These are places where you can enter uh, or insert a block. So if I want to add an image here, I would click plus, And then you see we have this block. So this is where we can add all of the blocks that Squarespace offers. I'm going to go with an image and then we can add an image so you can upload this from your computer or you can select from the library that they have, or you can browse stock images. And sorry, when I say library, I mean library that we have. So when you upload anything, it's gonna go into your personal library. For instance, if I add this, like so, and then I go back into that library, that image will be in there. Well, hopefully it is, and it's not gonna make me look stupid. So if I click replace and then select from library, 
you can see that's now in there. So basically the library stores all of the images and the videos that you use. Then for instance, we could add in, let's say a newsletter. So newsletter sign up, you know, if you've got a blog, you're probably gonna wanna be building an email list. So we have a newsletter here. We can select where it's stored. So I can say, okay, you can send a confirmation email. Always keep Google recapture enabled because it just reduces spam. And then basically, whenever someone signs up, you're gonna be able to view it in profiles here. So if I hit save, exit, and just go back, then go into contacts and subscribers. This is where people are gonna be. So this is the profile section. You'll see their email. If you collect it, you're gonna see their first and last name, when they were a subscriber since, how they subscribed, and whether or not they accept um, marketing. So that's where you can see anyone who signs up for your newsletter. You can also add in, let's say you want to add in a video. I have tons of video. I, well, I have all these YouTube videos in my blogs. So pop a video in and then you can either upload a video, select from the library, you know, if you've already had something uploaded or you can add a link from YouTube or Vimeo. Then what you want to do is hit save, keep it in drafts. And then what we can do is edit the back end. So we click here and then we can change the title if we wish. We can add a featured image. So this is gonna be important on the main blog page. Let's just search for an image, free images, and then cool dude, because that is me. Okay, this guy looks cool. Okay, this guy looks cool, so we'll add him. And then you can write an excerpt. So what's displayed, again, on the main blog page or on a summary block, that will be um, this text, basically. So I can say, here is the summary of the blog. Essentially, Sam is a very cool dude. You can change the post URL. So just make sure that this makes sense. You can change the author. So whoever's on the website can be an author. Click, send them down. Source URL goes in here. If, for instance, so I have a few clients that do this, they have like news. So they can like news in uh, like a third party outlet. So let's say they were featured in Forbes and they want to feature that on their site. They can say featured in Forbes, blah, blah, blah. Give the source URL and then they can link that title to the source URL. So if someone clicks on the blog, they don't go to a blog on this website. They'll go straight to the blog on the third party website. So hopefully that makes sense. Then in options, we can publish we can say that it need, needs review. So we can tag that, that we need to go in and review. Maybe someone else is writing it and then you need to review it. They can tag it there. Then we can have scheduled. So you can just schedule this for any time in the future, or you can keep it as a draft. SEO, this is where you can add your SEO title and description, social image. So when someone shares it, you can add a different image than the featured image. I just usually keep it the same, to be honest. Um, share, I've got, an, I've got a video on this, how you can share your blog posts, like sort of blast it out to subscribers and social media. So go and watch that. And then location, no one really cares about this. So once you're happy, hit save, and I am just gonna publish straight away. Then when we go onto the journal main page, you can see, cool dude, plus Sam's blogging journey begins is there. Now we can do more customization on the page itself. So I'm just gonna quickly nip back into the blog and then edit section. So we can change first off content width. So we can make it all the way across the screen, make it super narrow, or we can go custom. So when we do custom, we have a slider. I'm gonna put it to hundred text alignment. So that just basically means the title because when you edit the text on the page, you can just highlight and change the text um, alignment that way. Then if we go back in, we can do meta position. So this is this data above or below the title. You can choose whether or not to show categories and date. So if we give, for instance, let's go back into the back end. If I was to give options and categories, which I didn't even touch on actually, so 
I got distracted by the status. You can add tags. So, and then categories, you know, enter. Category two, enter. And then if you wanna get rid of one, just toggle, delete. Comments, so you can have comments on. And then featured post, if you wanna feature this like right at the top, then you can do that too. And this will be, this will be in a summary block. So you can select whether or not to have blogs featured. You can do that here. To be honest, I never use that. So hit save. And now we're gonna see the categories as well. But you can choose whether or not to show that. So I'm gonna say, I don't wanna show the name. I don't wanna show the date, but I wanna show the category and I'm gonna put that above the title. So that's how that would look. Author profile, this will go at the bottom. So you can see my beautiful face, name and website URL goes there. And then tags are always shown at the bottom. Again, I have another video. I literally just released it last week on how to hide these tags because there's no toggle here to get rid of this, which is really weird. So you just need a little bit of code and that will get rid of it. So if you wanna get rid of that, either don't use tags or use the code that I put out. Uh, delimiter style, this means if we have multiple, so let's just say date like this, the delimiter is gonna be either a bullet, which is that, a pipe, which is that, a dash, which is that, or a simple space, which is that. Then header spacing, so you can change how much space is underneath the title. And then that is that for the on-page customizations. Now for the, the blog itself, so like the, the main blog, what I'm gonna do just for illustrative purposes is duplicate. So we have like a, a few. So we click duplicate and then duplicate again. We wanna publish these. So to get into the back end where, you know, where I clicked up there, you can do that from here as well. So click the three buttons, settings, and then we're back in the same thing. So let's do a different image. Let's just reuse this because I'm lazy. And then I'm gonna go into options, status, published. And then I'm gonna do the same for this one as well. So settings, search for images, free images, and we'll use this one. We're gonna hit save, and then we're gonna hit status, published, save, lovely jubbly. And then when we go into the journal, you can see we've got three posts. Now this does look really bad, so we need to change it. So we go into edit, and then edit section. So here we can change the layout. You've got side by side. Well, actually we start with grid, but we'll start at the top of this. So side by side, which looks like this. Single column blog, which looks like this, which is probably the worst of the lot, to be honest. Masonry blog, which basically means it doesn't crop the images. So it will just show them in their exact orientation. Then we've got basic grid, which is what I, I use pretty much all of the time. It just needs some customization. And then we've got alternating side by side, which is this. Now each blog comes with its own unique set of um, settings, but I'm just gonna show you the grid because most people are gonna do well with the grid. So we'll start with layout, layout basic grid blog, then page spacing, you can have inset or full, doesn't really make much difference, columns, so I always set it to three. This just immediately looks better. And then what we wanna do is change the horizontal spacing. So you can have literally no space between them or all of the space between them. So 150 pixels. I usually go with around 25, 25. So 25 meaning horizontal and then vertical. So drop that down. It means we're gonna have, when we get a fourth, fifth and sixth blog post that we're gonna have this amount of spacing between this and the next, or the top of the next image. Then images, we can have those below the blog titles or above. I, I would always say just have them above, to be honest. And then aspect ratio, I think square works well for the majority of use cases. And then image spacing just means this. So if you want no image spacing or very minimal, then we can put it down to 10px. If you want to go to zero, then you have to use some code. Again, i just keep this around 25. Just make sure everything's consistent. Then you've got your text alignment. So left, center, right, it's quite self-explanatory. We'll go with center. 
accept so you can actually choose whether to show or hide this often i'll be honest i hide i hide it so what i'm going to do is toggle hide and then the read more link i'll keep this on title spacing you know what it's going to be 25 and then text content width i put this to about 95 just so nothing bleeds right to the edge i, I find that weird personally and then read more spacing again you know what that's going to be 25 then we got the primary meta content i usually keep this as categories and then none for the secondary, just because it gets a bit busy otherwise. We're gonna do 25 pixels, and then the iconography is the same with the delimiter style. So that is how you set up your blog. If you wanna change the style, so like color and the size of the fonts, all you need to do is go back into edit section, colors, and then you can change the styling of this. So I'm gonna change that to I like the look of green. So we'll save that. And then to change the fonts, all we need to do is click the brush up here, fonts, and then just hover over the font that we want to change. So I think the title will look way too big. So I'm going to click on that. And then we're going to find the matching header size. So I think this is H3. There we go. Yeah. So let's put that down to two. And that's going to make all of the H3s across the site this size. But I think that's okay personally. Hit save, hit exit, move myself out the middle, make this bigger. And then you can see we've got a fully fledged blog, categorized, we've got titles, read more. We go in and we've got the blog set up. And there we go. So that is exactly how you set up your blog on Squarespace. And hopefully, you know, this was quite a comprehensive guide that has shown you the ins and outs of everything you can do on the blog. If you found it useful, please make sure to leave a like hit subscribe and check out all of the Squarespace resources in the description below.